Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, sorry, I've, I've interrupted, obviously, so please, no, carry on. <laughs> uh, thank you for coming. This is our fourth and final session of the day. We've uh, covered multi-cloud networking, we've covered our CVIM product, and now we're going to get into building NFV applications with OpenStack and Cisco ACI. We've got Domenico Destoli and Ifti Rathor down here, two of our engineers, and away we go. We are, we are going to build time in for Q&A at the end. And for those of you who are always very, very busy trying to take pictures of the screen, video of the session will be up on the OpenStack Foundation YouTube channel later tonight. So save the space on your camera for pretty pictures of Berlin. And away we go. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. And uh, welcome, everybody, to this session. Uh, so as Gary said, it's about OpenStack and ACI, so how we are going to build your NFV solution based on OpenStack and ACI. My name is Domenico Dastoli. I'm a technical marketing engineer from uh, NCME Business Unit, which in Cisco is the business unit responsible for ACI. Uh, so I'm going to present the first part of this session today, and then my colleague uh, Ifti uh, will uh, also take care of the, of the rest of the, the presentation. So thanks a lot for being here, by the way. I heard that someone is playing against us. There are beers, uh, maybe I shouldn't tell you, uh, but I, I really um, appreciate the fact that you are here instead of drinking beers in the other section. Uh, <laughs> so let's get it started. Uh, the agenda today is indeed going to be uh, split on different uh, uh, things. So obviously, since we're talking about Cisco ACI and OpenStack, I guess if you're here, you know about what OpenStack is. You may not know uh, what ACI is. So we're going to have a brief introduction about uh, uh, Cisco ACI, what it is. Uh, we're going to uh, understand why eventually you may want to run Cisco ACI as a solution together with OpenStack. So what are the benefits there? And then we are going to go uh, more towards the NFV kind of challenges that typically our customers uh, have or share with us. Um, and uh, how eventually with the Cisco ACI you can uh, solve better those kind of challenges. So Cisco ACI and OpenStack better together, if you will. So let's get it started. Uh, what is uh, uh, Cisco ACI? Uh, Cisco ACI is indeed uh, a Cisco software-defined networking solution. Uh, this is uh, basically based on three main components, right? So we have got uh, the underlay or the switching layer, if you like, which is based on Nexus 9000 switching family. Uh, so those guys uh, here. And this is uh, based on a bipartite graph, as we call it, or, or rather a, a, a topology of leaf and spine uh, kind of switches. So the second part of uh, ACI is actually made of the AP controller, or rather the AP controller cluster, which is the brain of the solution. So we'll see later that the Cisco AP controller is basically the single point of management of configuration, of troubleshooting, and visibility for the entire infrastructure of ACI. So the third component is obviously the software uh, that runs on the Nexus 9000 and the ACI AP controller, which is indeed called ACI, application-centric infrastructure. Now, the reason why we call it application-centric infrastructure is because ACI is indeed uh, introducing a sort of network, network policy framework, which is uh, indeed... Uh, um, shared amongst different kind of uh, compute uh, architectures. So you can basically build your uh, application framework, which can be then allowing uh, connectivity from uh, both bare metal server, as well as virtual machine, um, different kind of virtual machine managers, and uh, eventually also containers. So all this kind of architecture uh, or uh, computes can be eventually be part of the same kind of network security policy framework which is offered by the ACI solution. So the beauty of this is that you can uh, eventually move uh, from one kind of architecture to another or having uh, multiple kind of architecture uh, communicating with each other. So being uh, switched, routed, and eventually being also having some uh, service uh, insertion uh, to, to have uh, communication allowed between uh, uh, all of them. 
How does it work underneath uh, open, uh, well, the, the ACI solution, sorry. Um, ACI uh, works with uh, a protocol which is called OFLEX. So OFLEX is an open source uh, declarative model uh, which allows the communication between the AP controller, so our ACI controller, and the rest of the node of the fabric. So what it means is that ACI AP controller instructs all the nodes of what are the policy that should, should be defined and configured in the nodes in terms of uh, what is basically the intent of the user. So if I can give you an example, um, the declarative model is the way how I'm telling an instruction uh, rather without telling each and every step to get to the final configuration I would like to have. So if I'm thirsty, for example, in a declarative model, I'm just telling my colleague Ifti, Ifti, I'm thirsty, and he will figure it out how are the steps in order eventually to pour some water in a glass and bring to me the, 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 the glass, right? In an imperative model, which is the kind of old or legacy fashion uh, model of configuring things, I should tell instead Ifti exactly how to pour water in my glass, walk towards me, uh, going through the stairs, and eventually bring him to me the, the, the glass. Right? So with the OFLEX protocol, we really want to abstract the way how the controller doesn't have to know exactly the configuration that must be configured in each and every device, but rather only the intent of the user. So uh, obviously, uh, those uh, nodes or devices to which we are pushing the configuration must be smart devices, if you like. So that's why uh, those devices uh, will be running some sort of OFLEX agent, so some sort of agents which is capable of this understanding this declarative model. So the, the interesting thing is that this OFLEX agent is not only running in the ACI fabric, but is also running in the hypervisor, so it can be running in the compute nodes that you have. For example, it can be running, obviously, in the compute nodes from an OpenStack perspective. And we'll see it later, uh, you know, how exactly the paradigm works. But also, this can be extended to other agents uh, running on VMware. If you're having some uh, VMware uh, compute in your data center, or it can be also running on Microsoft SCVMM, as well as on some uh, type of routers or switches that you have in your data center. So this is a final slide before we jump into the OpenStack uh, way of integrating with ACI. And this uh, try to summarize very briefly how ACI works uh, with several kind of domains. Um, I think it's, uh, it's very well sharing the kind of ACI anywhere vision that we have because ACI is an SDN solution that wants to uh, be a solution not only for your on-premises data center, and when we talk about on-premises, we talk also about the possibility to extend your data center across multiple pods or multiple sites around the world. So having VXLAN end-to-end -end kind of policy enforcement, uh, which is uh, uh, completely uh, shared across multiple locations, right? But also, we work on a remote location or branch offices where you can extend, again, your VXLAN extension as well as well your network policy uh, enforcement. So the remote location here that we are working with is the possibility, basically, to have uh, small sites where you can deploy just a pair of lead switches, so the Nexus 9000 switches, or even having the ACI extended through what we call the virtual pods, so virtualized leaf and spine components that can run in a very many minimal footprint in your extended branch offices. At the same time, we also work on the public cloud on the other side, so who's not talking about public cloud? I think some of you may have uh, attended the previous session from our colleagues uh, in Cisco about the multi-cloud solution. So indeed, ACI is capable to extend towards uh, different clouds. So we're working now with AWS, but also Google Cloud Platform and Microsoft Azure are in, in the pipeline. And the idea there is that obviously you can extend through VPN or things like direct connect your data center network policy to the cloud or to multiple clouds. And you can decide obviously based on cost or based on different kinds of business analysis, uh, how you extend and where and what you extend exactly from your data center. So again, uh, 
that's a 1,000 uh, uh, foot view of, of ACI, but uh, indeed it's, uh, it's a very brief introduction just for us to be on the same page when we are talking about uh, what is ACI. Now, uh, obviously, why we are here? We are here because uh, well, when we're talking with customers, uh, we talk with several customers every week, uh, we understand that OpenStack has a number of challenges, especially from a networking standpoint, right? So especially we see that many customers are seeing uh, the fact that uh, the distributed layer three services are typically a challenge with OpenStack distribution. Uh, that's not always true, obviously, because we have got some uh, distributed uh, virtual routing function. But in general, if you move to more advanced kind of feature like NAT or floating IP or, uh, um, you know, other service insertion, then having net distributed network services in OpenStack is not really uh, something uh, trivial. Uh, at the same time, performance, especially you are here probably because you're interested in NFV, so performance in the NFV world is very, very key, right? So performance is uh, uh, also sometimes in OpenStack a challenge, together with the visibility and complexity of troubleshooting. Why? Because you typically focus on the overlay, so the architecture of OpenStack, how you create, spawn, a virtual machine, networks, etc. but you have very minimal visibility or at least you don't have a visibility of a kind of merge infrastructure with your underlay, so with your switching layer. So with ACI, we are trying to solve uh, these kind of uh, problems, and we have uh, possibly or hopefully a, a, a response for each and every of those. So first of all, we replace completely the, the data path from a neutron perspective, and we distribute basically the routing function, starting from NAT, but also floating IP, um, as well as uh, obviously DHCP and, and metadata uh, optimization, which is completely distributed in each and every uh, compute node that, that you have. We'll see more in details uh, actually in a few slides from now. The second thing is that uh, we also uh, support, obviously, hardware acceleration. So with the ACI plugin, we do have the possibility for you to run SRUV or OVS DPDK, and in the future also VPP. You may have heard about VPP also in our other previous presentation, right? At the same time, sometimes we, we talk with customers and many are interested to, to run either VLAN or VXLAN, but VXLAN comes as a challenge sometimes, depending on what kind of... Um, uh, uh, NIC interfaces you have uh, in your servers, right? So ACI provides you VXLAN in the back end. So basically between leaf and spine, we always run VXLAN. And you can decide if between the compute node and the top of the rack switch you run VLAN or VXLAN. But it doesn't really matter from a scalability standpoint because ACI is capable of doing per poor VLAN significance. So you can indeed run the same VLAN in many uh, leaf ports, but that VLAN may be significant, uh, si significating something different from an ACI standpoint. Again, from an integrated overlay and underlay perspective, we'll see later, but uh, uh, ACI basically uh, completely automates the configuration that is uh, uh, pushed from a neutron perspective, and therefore you're going to have a one-to-one -one mapping between the neutron component and the ACI component. And that means that you have a much better visibility of both your overlay and underlay. You'll have information like uh, in which hypervisor your VM runs, but also what kind of encapsulation that one is using, and to which leaf or to which top of the racks which that uh, specific compute node is connected to, right? So really end-to-end -end kind of understanding also of how the packet is flowing within the ACI architecture from one endpoint to another one. And finally, the uh, troubleshooting uh, uh, is significantly improved also from the L score and the telemetry system, which is part of the ACI architecture, with some uh, kind of L score, uh, which uh, in percentage will tell you, uh, you know, how healthy is your system, and eventually if there are any problems, will warn you with some alerts and folds. So, the ACI solution works with uh, multiple different OpenStack distribution, specifically, uh, obviously, with our Cisco Veeam solution, but uh, with Red Hat, OSP, uh, Director, or uh, Canonical, uh, Juju Charms. And what I mean by that is uh, 
basically the whole uh, installation part of uh, Cisco Veeam or OSP Director or Juju Charms take care for you of installing already the ACI plugin. And we'll see uh, in, a, in a slide what are these ACI plugin components that we're going to install. But basically there's minimal efforts from your standpoint or it's completely transparent, I would say, the fact that you are running uh, the ACI plugin or you are not from an effort perspective, right? So you'll see mostly the benefits and rather uh, no, no pain in, in terms of installation of the whole architecture. So what are the main components uh, of the ACI plugin? There are mainly three. There is obviously the ML2 plugin provided by Cisco ACI. So you may know better than me what ML2 plugin is. It's a framework provided by the OpenStack distribution in order to uh, configure your underlay switching layer if you want. So Cisco obviously provides one plugin for ACI. The second component, which is a key of the environment, is the ACI integration module, the AIM. This guy is actually re representing the one who is uh, doing RESTful API call in order to create ACI objects in your ACI architecture. And finally, we're going to have the OFLEX agent, the one that I was presenting before. And this OFLEX agent is actually deployed in each and every compute nodes that you have in your OpenStack architecture. So this is uh, eventually the, the overall uh, architecture picture where you, we, you see how the, the entire uh, flow works. And talking about the flow, indeed, uh, we can see here, you know, a sort of how you are operating your network from an OpenStack administrator perspective. And you will see actually that it doesn't change much from your normal utilization of OpenStack. So the OpenStack tenant will still interact with Neutron rather than Nova. You know, all the OpenStack projects from an OpenStack controller perspective. And uh, when creating, uh, obviously, all the network archi architecture, rather uh, the, the Neutron router, the Neutron network subnets, etc., these will, in turn, uh, push the uh, ACI integration module to have some RESTful API call to ACI, to the AP controller specifically, and create ACI objects. So we're going to have a one-to-one -one mapping of the neutron network created into ACI, what we call endpoint groups, right? So when you will attach virtual machine through Nova to your neutron network, eventually the AP controller will take care of configuring the whole fabric infrastructure so that you're going to have, you know, your pervasive gateway uh, configure and all the network policy configure in your Nexus 9000 uh, uh, switches environment. So uh, this is the one-to-one the -one mapping that we have. I'll go very quickly through it, but the idea is that for each and every neutron object that you have, you're going to have the corresponding ACI object. Right, so you have a full visibility of, of the things there. And uh, well, this is a screenshot of the ACI GUI, but I just wanted to highlight you the fact that when you create each and every object, for example, here an OpenStack project, we're going to have in turn one ACI tenant. When we create an ACI, an OpenStack neutron network, you're going to see objects created automatically in ACI, like ACI endpoint group and bridge domain with a corresponding uh, uh, subnet attached to that, which is representing your default gateway distributed in each and every node. And finally, you're going to have visibility on the Nova virtual machines that you create and attach to the neutron networks. So you're going to have information right, like uh, your uh, VM name, uh, the network, uh, the encapsulation that VM is attached to, uh, the compute node where that virtual machine is running on, right? So you will have really a full whole visibility what I was uh, talking to you just a few, few minutes uh, uh, back. Now, I want to switch to NFV uh, kind of challenges, and uh, sure, uh, shortly I will uh, also pass the word to my colleague Ifti. But uh, in general, when talking with customers about challenges on the NFV uh, kind of architecture, what we see is that in the NFV world, we see that you, you, you may want to create very rapidly and eventually create and destroy VNF in your whole environment. 
So the challenge there is that you may have VNF distributed everywhere in, uh, in your data center attached to different top of the rack switches, even possibly across multiple data center, right? And uh, the challenge is that the scale, oh, sorry, the scale of your architecture in terms of VNF that you're gonna have will be much wider. So you're gonna have obviously a need of uh, re re representing or doing uh, equal cost multipass towards all the VNF that you are creating. At the same time also optical, optimal performance on the VNF is also a challenge there, right? So the idea of ACI is also to uh, try to work in the, in the sense and in the um, kind of field of NFV and, and reporting and supporting customers around the different uh, kind of capabilities that are lacking there. So if we we're gonna talk shortly about a couple of features here, I, I'm gonna briefly introduce you uh, here that ACI supports neutron trunks uh, port, obviously. Um, also, we do support neutron SVI, so the creation, and again, if they will talk about it shortly, the creation dynamically of uh, BGP uh, SVI enabled uh, uh, networks on the top of the rack switches towards the VNF components or as well the uh, service function chaining of neutron, right? So you can create eventually service function chaining um, in, your, in your environment and be fully supported by Cisco ACI. And uh, as well, we support uh, OVS DPDK and SRUV, and as I said before, VPP is also some roadmap item uh, that we have with the Cisco ACI uh, in, the, in the short future. So having said that, I will pass now the, the word to IFTI, which is going to talk more about the Neutron SVI and the uh, SFC kind of architecture. All yours. Okay, let me see. Hello, hello. It's working, right? Anybody can hear me? So thanks, Domenico, for doing the hard part. So it was great. I'm going to start with this, uh, the SVI slides. Basically, what, what do we have for actually the Neutron S SVI features and which one do we use, right? So, so first thing is, is, as actually my colleague has told you, that the SVI is used for a couple of different, uh, uh, this is this, yeah. So for, the, for a couple of different reasons. One is, of course, you have VNFs that are adding services dynamic, dynamically in your data center or in the, in the data path of your uh, traffic that is maybe going from your branch office to the internet. So as you add more services, you want to make sure, or you add more net networks, you should be able to, to peer with the external world and advertise the routes using BGP or SPF or whatever protocol you like. And the second thing is actually giving you the ECMP, you have services that you're deploying that actually are exposing endpoints. So those endpoints could actually be the same IP addresses and if you actually advertise the same IP address from multiple points in, uh, in the ACI infrastructure, the ACI actually uses the, uh, uh, the automatically will load balance the traffic to all of those endpoints depending on the location. So it goes to the, it first gets load balance, balance to the 9K switch and the 9K switch will load balance to the, the closest uh, and uh, the least uh, used uh, VNF. So that's one of the main thing and, and so we need to be able to peer with the rest of the world to actually basically advertise our routes, and the second thing is actually we can use it for a 64-way uh, ECMP, which is actually spanning across multiple uh, sites, multi-pod, so th that's one of the main benefit for the, uh, for the SVI. Um, so, <clears throat> so you could actually support uh, six different pair of switches, and, and as, as I mentioned, you can actually distribute your load further. So it's, it's more like L3 load balancing coming all the way to your load balancer VNF, and then the load balancer VNF is actually doing extra load balancing uh, layer four to seven down to your application. So it actually gives you far, far more scalability and efficiency. Um, so this basically is showing that you can 
I cannot move because of this mic, but let me see if I can use that. So, so we are advertising the same web and, uh, and, and basically letting ACI decide which, which one will actually get the load. So, um, so it actually goes from the external world to the leaf switch automatically because the ACI policy allows it to, and then for that leaf switch will actually uh, load balance it to, if there are multiple VNFs deployed on the, under the same leaf switch, it will actually load balance to, the, uh, to those. Um, and so, yeah, the leaf will automatically extend it to that one. So, and this is basically, we have this demo actually running in our uh, uh, booth. If you want to actually come and see, we actually have the fall where we have uh, basically deployed three different networks. One network is actually representing the external world. And the second is the, our load balancer, which actually has multiple instances, but is, is advertising the same web through BGP, which allows us to actually have the external world come in and load balance. And then this, we have this load balancer, which actually load balances to a, to a real server farm. So it's basically L3 load balancing here to here, L4 seven, uh, four to seven from here to here. So, um, and actually, I should, I should have practiced the animation. So the, it's actually now it's a telling one. So we are actually, it's, uh, ex we're advertising 10, 10, 10, 10. And, the, and actually, it's when the first flow, so it's flow based, right? The first flow comes in, it's going to uh, uh, just go come to the ACI, and ACI will actually round robin it uh, one by one. To the to the load balance, so the second flow actually gets goes to the second one, and uh, so, and from this we can actually the uh, load balance the traffic using you know any any load balancer. There are a lot of actually distributed load balancers available that will uh, give you this scale. So uh, this application is for those if you you can build yourself, but there are commercial distributed load balancers available from. Actually, the companies that are they are here and today, so it's basically is going to load balance to uh, the load balancer L4 to 7 is going to load balance to the server farm. That's outside the ACI's. ACI will provide switching and routing for that, but what the main component is actually the the AC my thumb is too big. So the main component is actually. Uh, the uh, the ECMP that we're providing for uh, for external L3 load balancing. So that was the part for the scalability of your application. Now the SFC is the neutron standard neutron uh, service function chaining API, right? So what it allows you to do is create port pairs, deploy your VNF on that port pair using ingress and egress port and then define some kind of a classifier that will allow you to actually start uh, sending the traffic to your VNF or whatever you're deploying, and then the return path. So it is done using what we call as a multi-node PBR. PBR in ACI is what is called policy-based redirect. A policy-based redirect is done uh, with with the with a construct that we call a service graph that gets applied to a traffic or a router, for example, and anything that is flowing through it, we can say from using this classifier, redirect this traffic to this port pair, and then bring it back. So, and multi-node means you could actually have multiple bumps in the wire, which means you could actually take a service to VNF1 from VNF1 to VNF2, VNF2 to VNF3, and then back. So you can define all of those things without actually having any domain knowledge of ACI. That's what actually it allows you to do. So you do not need to know anything about ACI. You basically use the neutron calls, which is create port pairs, port groups, create flow classifier, then you can create a service chain. When you, as soon as you create the service chain, the traffic will automatically get redirected uh, because of the ACI's service graph functionality. And then you, and, and dynamically you can add and remove nodes to that particular service chain by using update service chain. And it's, it works out of the box without having to do anything on the ACI side. 
So this is the basic. Uh, so we have basically port chain API, and uh, <clears throat> that, that actually managed by uh, by uh, the Neutron, and then the driver manager passes that, and then AC, what happens is AIM will actually, which is as I, my colleague mentioned, it's the, uh, the the main module that pushes all the all the Neutron constructs to the ACI. I will actually push it uh, to the to the ACI fabric. And but for the neutron side, it's actually the same way. We're creating the port chain. We could take the port uh, port pair. We're taking multiple port pairs, making them port pair group. If you take multiple port pairs and create a port pair group, you're deploying those VNFs vertically, and ACI will take the responsibility of load balancing to those. So that, that's also provided automatically, the load balancing to vertical VNFs. And if you have multiple uh, <clears throat> port, port pairs in the service chain, port pair groups, and they're deployed uh, horizontally, which means if you have three port pair groups and you're deploying into a service chain, it's going to take your traffic to the first por uh, port pair group, first VNF, then second VNF, and the third VNF. If you add another port pair group, Update uh, that that uh, that service will automatically be inserted into, the, into your path. So, um, what uh, uh, we support is actually the API and the functionality, the CLI for actually creating the the Neutron port pair uh, port pair create command, the Neutron port uh, uh, pair group create, classifier create. All those commands are part of the Neutron CLI. So that CLI extension has to be provided by the, um, by the vendor, but we, we fully support the API and it works out of the box. Of course, you can always get the, um, get the Neutron SFC uh, CLI as just a, a Python to uh, SFC. And that actually will allow you to, to create this, but of course, the vendor that is giving you the open stack is the one who has to support that part. We support it past the API. Yeah. So, so open stack creates everything. So um, <clears throat> basically, when you're do creating the SVI, the open stack will create the SVI. It's an extension to Neutron. So you'll say, I want to create a net, Neutron net create uh, type SVI, it will, it will actually automatically push the configuration. So Neutron uh, side will create the SVI, it will manage the life cycle of the VNF, and it will manage the, the port, uh, port chain, right? So all those three things are, are declaratively done from the Neutron side, and what the, it's actually pushed to the, uh, to the ACI, and ACI actually uh, does the data path orchestration, which means that the uh, traffic automatically will start going, or if you're actually peering, it will make sure that uh, uh, that you can actually have uh, uh, peering capabilities with the external world. And so once we create it, it actually is implemented as a service, uh, well, as I was saying, it was a multi-node uh, uh, service graph, so you basically have the client, and then you have a server, you have two networks, and within that you're inserting this graph. So to create this, what we do is uh, we have to create networks, which means you have you created two networks and you created ports, ingress and egress port. After that, what you do is you uh, insert that into a service chain. So, and that VNF will actually start receiving the uh, the traffic, and uh, and then. Inside AC, ACI, we have a different semantic, right? So we have the, the, uh, the consumer and the provider instead of the ingress and egress, but it actually means the same thing. This knowledge is not required at all to, to use it. All you need is a sniffer to see that, yes, I'm actually seeing my traffic come to this VNF and uh, it's going out, or if you have any monitoring, it, it automatically gets uh, done. Sorry, we don't have too much. So, this is just a simple example of, uh, of creating it. So the, we create two networks. We create a flow, a flow classifier. Then, then we basically create the ports. We create the ingress port, we create the egress port. We basically use the Nova to, to start the VNF using the ingress and egress port. We also create the, uh, so we take those two ports and we 
put them in a port pair using just a neutron port pair command. Then we take that port pair and we create a port pair group. It's just a single instance. If you have multiple port pairs and you create the port pair group from them, then it actually will be deployed vertically. And then from the port pair group and the classifier that we created in the last page, we actually uh, create the neutron port pair using the neutron port pair create. So it's basically completely neutron workflow. There is absolutely nothing non-standard about it. And, uh, and, and the magically, you're, you'll start seeing that the traffic that you're classifying is automatically reaching the ingress port of the VM. And the tra traffic that you send out from that VNF actually goes back. So that's, uh, that's the um, that's the VNF part. You can, as I just said, you can actually add and dynamically remove VNFs by just using the the the, the update uh, the po uh, the port chain update command. So here, basically creating two more networks. Can you see that? I think it's running out of battery or something. So yeah, we're creating the source NAT destination at another port pair, and then we basically add that. Uh, well, the same uh, classifier, sorry, I went too much back. Yeah, more pumps in the wire. So we create the, another, another network, we create two more ports, we add, uh, uh, basically create another, uh, another port pair group, and then we use those two port pair groups. So we are using, initially when we created the, uh, uh, the chain, we only had one port pair group. Then we actually update and we add the two uh, two port pair groups, right? Cluster one and cluster two. And it automatically will add the second port pair, which means the second VNF will also start receiving the traffic that is leaving the first VNF. So, and uh, so, yeah, and that that is what is a multi node PVR, which means you see now multiple uh, uh, v, uh, VNFs on the ACI. This is basically the ACI side, but as I said, like ACI knowledge is not really required, but just to see, you can actually get full, full visibility on the ACI side in actually what is being inserted in your traffic. Uh, so this is a very, very typical um, use for all these things together. What we have is Basically, we have these VMs, which are basically brass VMs. We have an external NAT VM, and this basically is customer's data center. They're all actually running on OpenStack. So from here, we create an SVR where we can actually say the route to, to Google or 888 is through here. So all the traffic will start coming here. Here, we can actually advertise here outside and say the route actually to the data center is here. That's the peering part. If you want, we are also serving uh, a different type of applications here. You can also use uh, the, uh, the ECMP to scale your um, thing. And now that actually, and then this SVI will start having uh, all the customer traffic flow through this transit network and go outside. Now, what we can do is we can use those uh, neutron port pair commands. We can create these networks and actually start inserting dynamically applications into the path of that traffic. And another thing is we could actually have multiple copies and we can use segmentation using the neutron trunk port to separate different branches or different uh, customers or different tenants traffic and we can treat them very differently depending on that segmentation ID or the, the VLAN that we have assigned that. So the, this there's gonna be a trunk port here and a trunk port here and then the, this actually is going to have multiple VLANs pass through it and then you can actually define depending on the networks and the VLAN that you're creating dynamically you can treat different customers' traffic, different types of traffic differently by actually using different VNFs, depending on what actually you need for, for that. So this is a very simple uh, uh, use case that you can put together maybe in a couple of hours. Uh, it's a full CPE type. We also have a demo for that, but it's not running here because we usually do it live. It requires a lot of, lot of resources uh, to, to run all of these things. But uh, you're really, really welcome to come to our uh, booth and, uh, and actually look at the, the demos that uh, we have. So that was basically it. And uh, if you have any questions, 
I will hand it back to Dominico. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Tifti. Uh, so I'll, I'll sum up very quickly. We're running out of time. Uh, I guess we highlighted uh, a number of benefits to run ACI and OpenStack. So ACI and OpenStack better together. I think that should be hopefully clear by the end of the session. But uh, uh, we have got some uh, want to know more, some links uh, where you can find more information. Also, we're going to be at the booth, uh, just the other side of the, of the building. So you can find us there. And uh, yeah, that would be all from our side. So if you've got questions, we'll be around, we'll be at the booth, so you, you can find us uh, anywhere you want. Yeah. Thank you all for Thank coming.